We've done a few secret starting classes so far, but all of them come from Elden Ring. FromSoft is constantly reusing weapons and armor sets, which means we could pull someone out of the graves of Dark Souls 3. And if I'm pulling someone out of the ground, I want to pull an onion. Sigurd of Katarina helped me out so much in Lothric, let's help him in the lands between. To watch these runs live, come hang out on Twitch, we're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Make sure you're subscribed, if you don't subscribe, we'll never be able to raise a toast together. Now, let's get started on the onion run, even though in this game it's not an onion anymore. Not that onions are bad, this is just more good. Sigurd starts as a hero, obviously. We've already saved the day in Dark Souls 3. Wait, did we? I don't really know what happens at the end of that game. The Scion kills us, but that's just to go faster as we get to Limgrave. Crafting kit acquired, horse acquired, poor thing has to do some heavy lifting this time, and a wet blade. Since our weapon isn't unique, we'll actually slap a few different Ashes of War on it. Now time for something a little less traditional. We're starting off in the Weeping Peninsula right away. It's the standard Weeping Peninsula field trip. Golden Seed, then one, two, to three sacred tears. Onions gotta bring the tears. Big boy starts the run grabbing snacks. He's a man after my own heart. We're really here for a little German snack or a big German snack, the Zweihander. For those who don't sprechen Sie Deutsch, Zweihander is German for big ass sword. But it costs money and right now we're poor. On the way to the money, we get the strength tier and go to the church for a flask to mix our Siegbrew. Again, translating from German, Siegbrew means drink that makes my tummy feel funny. You ever have a few Siegbrews and wake up in the dragon barrel? Yeah, it happens to the best of us. There's some graves we can rob to trade in and get that sweet Zweihander. Ronnie tries to win us over, but she's not our type. Your legs do not work on me, for I am homosexual. Before we become an armor farmer, we need to farm a few runes. Let's just trick that dumb knight's cavalry off the cliff. It just works after I died twice. But then it just works, gamers, and we become a little thicker before wrestling with our boyfriend, Yorm the Giant. Yorm is wearing our headpiece. I would imagine a shared wardrobe is one of the perks to dating someone of the same gender. But he only gives up the headpiece about 3% of the time. I tried to do it with base odds once, then decided we could just dip to Lernia, get some graces we'll need later anyway, and double our odds for 9 minutes. Seems like the move. On the southern end of the lake, there's a pile of 3 silver pickles. They're so effective, we get Yorm to give us the head on the second drop. To find out how well we affected our drop rate, Google Yorm gives Sigurd of Katarina head on your work computer. That's enough to get us started, but we still need to become larger. Much larger. Nerd Juice lets us really show off the starting Ash of War on our Zweihander. Stamp Upward Cut. Here's how it works. You stamp, then cut in a decidedly upward direction. That makes smaller enemies fly into the air, and it's super funny. Honestly, super effective, even late game more on that later. For now, Patches ends up being the hardest he's ever been. The shield blocks 100% physical damage, and that's all we got. Starting to see how he was able to steal our armor in the last game, but at his core, Patches is still just a weak coward hiding behind a big shield. So we win and get the recipe for gold pickled foul feet. Even more snacks. Yum. Don't drop them in the abandoned cave. It's so full of poopy on the floor. We keep getting rotted, warping out, getting rotted, warping out. Finally, we get through and make our way to the Clean Rot Knights. Are they small enough to get sent skyward by our sword? We're breaking We're free! Forget stance breaking, get yourself a weapon with a launch property, that is the most fun thing you can do in all of Elden Ring. Although I do love smacking dragons in the face with my big honking sword. Colossal swords have massive stance damage to just knock Smarag down. We could just grab the key and go through, but it's kind of fun to beat the hell out of a dragon. Then warpy warpy and we're on the Bellum Highway, but I forgot something very important. Better physic flasks on the way, sneak up on the bear, just in or wrestle it. Sigurd is used to wrestling bears. If you consider Yorma bear and consider what they do, wrestling. Imagine that, and then hey, imagine the Onion Knight in Fort Hyde. There we get the first piece of the Dectus Medallion, then back to the Dragon Barrow and into Fort Faroth. We get poisoned, lovely, but we're already pretty strong. So let's just kill the rats before they can kill us. Makes it easier to warp out after we get the other Dectus Medallion piece. Now we can go up to Altus, pop into the sealed tunnel for the Bell Bearing 2, tried to upgrade the sword, but we're a little too poor, and heavy sword 
swords are more expensive to level up. We don't really need it for Margit. Even at its current level, it's a colossal sword, and Margit is kind of intended to be one of your first bosses. Technically, he's our fifth, but his knees buckle pretty quickly when we hit him with Siegward's two-hander. I wonder what the German word for two-hander is. Oh well, we can finish Margit off in about a minute. With another pocket acquired, we need to get a great talisman from an easy boss. It's Gilka time. She spends so long roaring that we can get these fully charged, charged attacks off, and uh... Dude, where's my stance break? I kept just expecting her to fall for a crit, and she didn't. So I was reminded why she is an appropriate Altus level boss. If she hits you, she hits you pretty goddamn hard. Death 3 is to Gilka. Don't tell anyone about this. It's just between you, me, and the 50,000 other subscribers here. Second try, we get in for that Ritual Sword Talisman and 10% more damage at full health. An Altus boss killed us, so that means we should go to the Dragon Barrel, where the bosses hit twice as hard. That means they've got twice as many runes, and it doesn't matter if you don't get hit. Putrid Avatar first. I've logged that moveset down in my mind. It's almost as free as Grail and worth even more runes. We kill it, then run to Grail, not Grail, hoping to kill it fast enough to save the pickle. That puts a three minute timer on the boss fight in which the challenge comes from how often he flies away. Look at that health bar. Now look at my pickle icon. God, god damn it. We get the runes to drop, but the animation to eat our next pickle is too slow, so we miss out on the pickle boost. Desperate not to waste the pickle, I run up to the Black Blade Kindred, and this boss is different than Grail and the Avatar because it's actually kind of freaking hard with an early game build. It's kind of freaking hard with a late game build. So we died, wasted a pickle, and now I'm very sad. There's a few bad people who are also really easy to beat up in Stormvale, so let's do that to get an ego boost. Gostok wants to trick us and steal our runes, but if he wants to trick Siegward, he'll need a more well thought out plan. We won't get fooled again. And we just go through the safe path, even though we had him open the danger gate. I want the iron wet blade so we can make our lengthy sword a heavy long sword. Length is great, but Siegward also needs that girth to be accurate. That's also why we need Bernie to give us the upward cut Ash of War, so we can do what we've been doing, but it will only scale with strength instead of strength and dex. Godric is an absolute chump, just a fool, and he can't handle the hander. For once, though, we're not using his great room. Siegward only needs three stats, Vigor, Endurance, and Strength, so let's go get a different great room. Obviously, Siegward gets invited to a lot of parties. Dude makes his own beer, loves to chill out, and dances with the reckless abandon only an onion could have. The more the merrier in this fight against Radon, Sieg is all about being summoned. It only makes sense that he'd bring some friends. We break Radon's knees, or maybe Leonard's knees with the stance break, I guess. Did you know Leonard is the name of the horse? And did you know you can back up at the start of the arrow face to get the melee face to start early? Okay, just hit him a few more times and we get the win. Not even a problem. Scoop up a few rune arcs for when we eventually decide to let Radon great rune turn us into the thickest boy of all time and then it's time for the tree sentinel he's got hands and those hands are holding some big ass hammers and shields we can't get our real thickness on until we get past this guy so those hits are hitting really really hard ours are too as we've got one hand for the sentinel and one for the horse he rode in on i guess technically we are riding up to him but point still stands still a first try win we died to gilka but first tried the tree sentinel <laughs> Then we hit up the capital and get killed by an Erd Tree avatar. To be fair, it was Elden Stars Jr., and dodging that without a horse is pretty stupid. I wouldn't let it weigh too heavily on my mind. Can't really spare the weight. Honestly, things are about to get very heavy. She is just heavy. Believe me. Heavy enough. Oh, Lord. Lionel set. It's got a hefty belly, thick thighs, and big hands. With big hands, I know it's the one. But there's a bit of a blister in our sun here, because even though I've been investing some of our runes into endurance, I haven't invested enough. We're in heavy load. Capitalism doesn't help. We can't sell enough stuff for the runes to level us up into medium load, so we need to go impress a big cookie jar, and that means a trip through the Saoirse Ronan River well, then back up the elevator into Caelid. There's a big ravine. This is the easiest way to get there. There are some archer golems who are annoying, and you have to pass them every time you want to talk to the great cookie. Cookie wants us to fight three NPCs, and that sounds like a fresh hell. I know you can cheese it, but I wanted to try and do it legit. That sounds silly. Cheese is delicious. Let's do it with with cheese. Remember that old Nietzsche's quote though, if you stare into the cheese long enough, the cheese stares back. We fell down. These three just aren't cooperating and I'm being so encouraging. I'm going to jump! No! Oh, do 
a flip! Eventually, gravity does our work for us and becomes less of a burden, thanks to the great Jarsenal charm, which boosts our max equip load by 20%. I would have done Raya Lucaria before we went into the capital, but I wanted to get our armor as soon as possible. That means that the Red Wolf of Radagon is pathetic. Its short-ass health bar falls to our impressively long sword. Moongrum is... And we're on to Ranala. Phase 1 is a 1 cycle, which is good because the kids close to her do not survive a hit and we'd probably have to run around finding the golden girl. Upward Cut sends her to the moon, but she keeps running away. Don't worry though, Katarinians are natural sprinters, very deadly at short distances. So I close that gap and beat down the moon mommy. Our back doesn't look right, so let's do a quick detour to the coastal cave and fight the demi-human chives. Chives let us take off a bit of weight since the needle lets us remove our cape, but they're mostly for flavor. Obviously, we spar with the duelists before getting the ritual shield talisman, turning our defenses up even higher, and then fight Godfrey. This is one of my favorite types of builds, one that can literally just trade hits with a boss. They hit us, we hit them, but we have more juice than he does. He doesn't have any juice. Imagine going into a fight without having a couple of fun beverages. Couldn't be me. Black Knife Assassin is sent skyward and then it's time for Morgoth. He's fast, and Sigurd would never fast. You can't skip lunch. Last time we fought him, he choked and we won. This time, our two-hander makes him gag, and he gets sick everywhere. I'm sure he'd be embarrassed, and that's probably why he's after our throat. Thankfully, Sigurd is the goat. So even if the spurts for Morgoth's geysers are an issue, we get the big win. Coming back for a shorty stream, we're in the Four Biden lands. It's a great place to remember that BMI is a terrible way to measure someone's health, and the best way to make sure people are eating healthier is to give them a solid income to buy fresh groceries and have a work schedule that allows them to cook at home. Enough reflection. Let's hit the mountaintops of the giants, get that bell bearing three, and a smithing stone ten. We can now turn the Zweihander up to plus 18, but it's expensive, and we don't need it. The next boss is going to take it easier on us. It's Sigurd's boyfriend, Yorm. Yeah, you thought Sigurd was big check out his significant other. We throw a bit and take a hit from the avalanche. It's fine. We're honestly just play fighting. That's why I'm not busting out the storm ruler and instead just going for his ankles. Phase two goes fine. He rips his foot off and oh, that's, that's probably not good, but he's even hotter when he's halfway done with a lot of fire shooting out everywhere and making it a bit risky to be underneath him. Thankfully, we have enough protection that we have a satisfying finish and the fire giant has le petit mort. That's French, not German, but it means a little death and not Nothing else. It comes with a big load of runes. We can also burn down the Erd Tree now and head into Faramazula. It's real big boy hours as we bring in Bernie and fight the Godskin duo. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh my god. That was a combo. Okay, I died. Take two. I'll take on the skinny lad. He didn't get the memo that it's big boy hours. After one of them goes down, Bernie and I can double team the rest of them as they come in. Even though summoning helps raise the boss's stance resistance, our colossal sword and Bernie's colossal hammer just bust these ghosts down so fast. And busting? That makes me feel just swell. Now that we get the last bell bearing, we can max out these Y-hander to be the biggest and baddest thing we can swing. Let's swing it at the biggest beasts in the lands between. I like them big. Colonel, I'm trying to infiltrate Faramazula, but I'm dummy thick, and these birds kinda just don't bother me today. Sweet. Now it's time for the Draconic Tree Sentinel, or DTS for short. I need you to understand we fought this dude so many times, I can't say his name every time we're fighting him. There's not a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and on this run, it doesn't matter I can't summon a Spirit Ash to save me. Some days, I lose to this dude, but not today. Next, it's the Beast Clergyman, more like the Beat Clergyman, because we beat him. After that, Malakath's just a formality. He's so much easier in Phase 2 than in Phase 1. Oh, uh, well, eh. Whoops. Well, back at it. The second time we get a little close to dying in phase two again, our big boy armor isn't great at helping us against percentile HP damage that the Black Blade does. Also seems like we're taking a lot of damage in general. Armor isn't great. Thankfully, we don't have many bosses left. I'm sure it will be fine later. Hey Gideon, what's your favorite high school musical track? When there was me and you? Terrible choice. Go to the sky. Godfrey is back and about time too, and this time he's a meaty dude. A lot of our builds have some status effects, but since we're just kind of swinging a giant sword, it doesn't matter. It means this isn't much different than the shade fight, at least in phase one. The giant shockwave is the only change and it starts so slow that we can kind of just push him into phase two. Phase two is different, but we can hit him with a bunch of jump attacks and then by the time he uses the shockwave, we can break his knees and crit for the win. Radagon does not go well the first time, it goes a bit better the second time, 
not much better. Third try, that's the win. We can dodge through the hammer slammer and slap him up. For the Elden Beast, I have a big complicated strat. We're gonna hit it with a big sword. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Elden Stars isn't a problem when we have vigor and the big armor helps even more. That's the biggest boss in terms of runes. There's still a bigger boss, but we're not gonna go do that yet. Honestly, I don't think of the section titles before I do the run. We're sort of just clearing out remembrances in like, uh, in order that I remembered to do them in. Placidious Axe is one I normally forget, so let's go do him first. Avoid that lightning and our Colossal Sword breaks Plassey's knees. Honestly, makes sense that it's not that hard. His knees are disproportionately smaller than the rest of his body. This fight goes weird. It doesn't start teleporting right away, so we kind of just deal with more of its attacks. With the teleport phase, we break the stance again before it can go for the the Omega laser, then it goes for the Omega laser, we can tank it and finish him off. Now let's go underground into Radon's hole. Sigurd is no stranger to plundering a giant's hole. Mimictir is an NPC, so we send him up high. School musical reference. To try and cut down on the backtracking later, I got some torches lit, and then we take on the gargoyles. Normally for a gank fight like this, I like to have a spirit ash for us to summon. We're kind of short on time this week, so I'm just gonna go for it. The worst part of this fight isn't the gank. They just keep making the big poison puddle. I'm not silly enough to fall for it, but it does force me to back off. I wish my sword had some sort of wind blast that we could use to hit enemies from afar. Now that's what I call foreshadowing. We've opened up the path to the deep root depths. On the way down, we kill some ants, then grab vacuum slice. That's gonna turn our Zweihander into a storm ruler. Check it out against Boggart. I have no idea if this is good or if Boggart is just a learning level NPC. Let's bring it to a medium boss in Volcano Manor. The hand outside gives us a somber stone we might use later, not even that much later, like in five minutes. Then bash through the Volcano Manor town and fight the Godskin Noble. How good is the vacuum slice? The fuck? Here's why. I know why. I'm gonna tell you why. So, since I'm saying why, you don't have to tell me why. Like, it's something I don't know, okay? I'm saying it right here. It scales with strength and dexterity. We have 11 dexterity. So even if our strength scaling is maxed out, it's only doing half of its ideal damage. Still, this is just a godskin noble. We can just hit it with a sword a bunch. We already fought harder versions of this. And then we'll fight the abductor version, just so it can't hit me through a wall. Then go through the fog door to get the dagger talisman and a free rune arc, but like, not the somber stone seven for some reason? Why? We also didn't pick up the five and the six in the town. Hey, past Phil, just go get those. They are free. Too bad my Vice can't travel through space and time, so we get the Serpent Hunter and can level it up to plus four, but I think that should be fine enough. It mostly scales with strength. Boy, if I had a nickel for every time Sigurd was in a fight using the Storm Ruler against a giant that wanted to swallow him, I'd have two nickels. Also, some of you sickos have said that the Rikard fight is better than the Yorm fight, and like, <laughs> no? Not at all. In both fights, you have two options. The two options for this fight is to use the Storm Ruler slash Serpent Hunter or constantly get flinched by the magma and hitting a body that doesn't exist in the right places. Yorm's two options are using the Storm Ruler or fighting his ankles where he has bigger resistances. That is so much better than the magma option for Rikard. Anyway, we kind of just script it so Rikard doesn't get to move between the stance breaks and the weapon art. That's the biggest entree in terms of size. Now we're just finishing off side dishes. Don't you tell me you're full, just eat it, eat it. Actually, our next course is dessert. It's a blueberry mousse. First, we have to get the proper lighting. Then we can tangle with the regal cinema spirit. It's tall, but it's also very dead. I think it was already dead. And this is the ghost? Or a memory? Or the memory of a ghost? Spooky! Back in the deep root depths, we take the express coffin down to the incel river main. For clarity, Sigurd is not an incel, he's just not into women. After crossing the lake of rot, we jump into the coffin number three, so we can get to our shrimp course. It's a jumbo shrimp, the most jumbo shrimp, Astel. His face has a questionable grab range, but it's actually not that big of a problem. We have 60 vigor, and a lot of these courses are sort of just exercise and patience. And have you seen how big our stamina bar is? We are great at exercise. For our next boss, we need to go to the Consecrated Snowfield, which means we have to fight Niall and his two bros. Sigurd can handle three guys at the same time. In in a fight. I was I meant in a fight. Still not missing the Spirit Ash, honestly. I thought about grabbing the Mad Pumpkin Head for our Yorm equivalent, but haven't really felt the need to grab it. Since the Onion Knight is a nice lad, we kill the Perfumer instead of the Old Man for the other half of the Hallig Tree Beast, then ride down to Sherbet Land. The Putrid Avatar is just an extra side salad, but it gives a lot of good experience, and that roughage will probably help us be a bit more regular. But then the Dragonkin Soldier decides to combo us off the horse and slam us on the ground. Just the weirdest deaths happening this run. Penguin Noble opens up the path to Mogwin, 
Then we find a Sanguine Noble so we can buy the Rune Arcs in the Hazy Maze Cave. And a third Sanguine Noble chases us outside and makes a Blood Puddle by the Grace, which stops us from actually resting for a little bit. Stupid blood puddle I'd rather have blood pudding so it's moog time sorry i'm making a bunch of food jokes i'm just kind of sick of cleaning up all these dang remembrances and onions go great with a lot of foods they can work surprisingly well in desserts phase one moog is no issue we just slice and dice phase two bit tougher moog's attacks are faster and he leaves huge splashes of blood everywhere that don't care about our big hp pool or thick armor well he does percentile damage percentile damage is not our friend we still win and clear out the problematic representation to get a dump truck of runes for our troubles. Like I said earlier, we're not doing Godric's Great Rune. We're using Radon's Great Rune. The only stats we're using are Strength, Vigor, and Endurance. We're never running out of mind for our weapon arts. The dexterity scaling of the Zweihander is gone from the Heavy Infusion, so let's just take advantage of having 60 Vigor and 50-ish Endurance to become a physical specimen. You might not like it, but this is what peak Onion performance looks like. Now we can do some chores for Rami. We're not going to marry her, but we can still be a pal. Carry a Manor, Ghost Loretta, barely a speed bump. Hi Ronnie, you want a knife? Okay. Okay, here's a knife. Thank you for the statue. Kick flip it upside down. Gnarly, radical. Lilith, please make Elden Ring Pro Skater after Bloodborne Cart, and then we can get the Curse Mark of Death. Oh, hey, we never fought Fia's champs. I think Alexander is probably the Siegward equivalent for this game, the dummy thick himbo who helps you throughout the run, but maybe it's supposed to be Lionel? That's the set we're using. He's just not as present in the game as he should be. Hey, there's even a pumpkin head here too. It's our whole armor set. Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Fia wants some hugs. Everybody loves himbo hugs. Can't blame her. Remember when I said Vacuum Wave was bad? Well, I think it's great for Fortisax. This is the game's second Storm Ruler fight, since the Sword Blasts are awesome at hitting it in the head. And since the Ash of War is right outside in the Deep Root Depths, I'm calling that intelligent game design. Only one Membrance left. Liturgical Town goes fine. We have enough health for the Archers to not be a problem. Same for the Halic Tree. Yeah, the damage is never going to be a problem. Even the Crystallion can't kill us, so Swag Jump and we can fight Loretta, but meat. She's got way more HP, way more damage, and is now susceptible to status effects. The only status effect we have is, uh, kill to death. She also doesn't have any status effects, just a big slash that's stupid easy to dodge. Loretta isn't a great card. If I was Melania, I would put like, I don't know, two Ann Orlando Knights, three Ballista, and a Putrid Avatar in a 20-foot square. It seems way more effective. The Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman will take our physical damage to absurd levels for Melania, and wait, why does she get a full section? Until phase two, all of Melania's damage is physical. We are wearing one of the heaviest armor sets in the game. I did not say the heaviest. I said one of the heaviest. Everyone heard that. Nobody's gonna tell me Bull Goat is heavier. I made a whole video on the heaviest armor set. I know which one is the heaviest, but this one is close. And the Ducky Dance still does not give a shit. We dodge it every now and then, but after you get her to 75% of her HP, Maybe if she didn't spend so much time dancing, she wouldn't have been so worn out when Moog Lindberg'd Mikola. Phase two, she onions right away, so we can vacuum slice, and that's not a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, that's bad. Some positives. The Zweihander is really good at breaking her stance. She doesn't actually have that much stance resistance, technically. But also, she does a lot of little dashes. All of those dashes have super armor, and if you hit her during those, it doesn't count towards a stance break. The time she's dashing does count towards her recovering her stance, though. She is also immune to stance breaking during the ducky dance. I thought she wasn't thinking I had broken her stance in previous runs, but after double checking, that was status effect proccing from either bleed or frostbite. Those can work to break her out of the ducky dance, but a standard stance break won't. Also, the entire time she is surrounded by her ducky dance, she is recovering stance pressure. We don't have a spirit ash either, so her focus is entirely on me with no breaks. I could show you all the deaths, but this is probably a better visualization. After coming back a few days later, I remembered the power of flight. That do anything for you? Well, it does something for me. Stamp upward cut is great 
against Melania. Kind of. It's good against Melania. It's fine. She's small enough that it will send her into the sky unless she's doing one of her dashes or the ducky dance. Later, I'm gonna figure out how to make it really click, but I didn't have that down just yet. I gotta learn stuff. I'm not a perfect encyclopedia of the game. These are scientific runs, but it's already doing better than the vacuum slice. So let's get a talisman that makes it better. We need to go to our spiritual successor, Alexander on Mount Gelmir, then buy some stone sword keys and meet up with him on Gelmir for the jar shard. It is not hard to get in his innards, just takes three days. First one getting him out of the hole, second one fighting Radon, third one on Gelmir. Oh, four dates actually. He's very conservative. Back to Melania, we're now dealing 15% more damage with the upward cut, but it's not quite enough. I know I've already mentioned it, but come on. How is this much armor not enough to make her ducky dance manageable? To be honest, investing heavily in endurance to wear heavier armor is just a waste of runes. No matter what you're wearing, the late game bosses are just going to carve you up. There's a reason Let Me Solo Her does this naked. If you don't don't plan on getting hit, why wear armor? And if you do plan on getting hit, you're planning to lose. Even the Bullgoat set doesn't have enough thickness to be consistent against Melania's many, many combos. Not even just the Ducky Dance, like, she's got other combos. Lots of times I just quit out to save the Rune Arc. So this is more of a time suck than a lot of death. I mean, it's still a lot of death. Sometimes she kills me before I can quit out. It's just more of a time suck. But after an hour and a half of suck and an hour with the stamp, we find the rhythm. I was foolishly hitting Melania with charged attacks after we stance broke her and she was on the ground. I should have just started launching her again with the cut. So then I could hit her with the charge attack on the ground and then a fast R1 is enough to break the stance. And repeat. It's not a flawless strategy. We have to trade on the R1 hit and sometimes her AI will do one of the super armor dashes or the ducky dance. So we gotta quit. A couple times. But eventually she cooperates. Here's the run. Trade to get her... Then charged attack. Tank through another hit for the stance break. Then repeat. She goes up. We charge on the ground and swing. This time didn't chain. So we have to outrun the ducky dance. Turns out we can break the stance with our combo even if we're using a rolling R1. She must be really close after the first two hits. Then another combo. Up down and we're in phase two just wait for the onion with vacuum slice we could get a bit of damage but it turns out the window at the end of the onion petals is actually pretty forgiving and then we can start the loop send her up charge and crit we get kicked before another stance break but that's fine after another combo she's at one percent of her health like just a sliver and then she onions it's only one more hit and we prove we are the true master of the onion art at seven hours and 10 minutes we killed 37 bosses and died 33 times without a spirit ash and you know what i didn't love that big sword good focusing on a few stats is great because the radon great rune is really fun to use vacuum slice is situationally pretty useful but stamp is useful more often though still only situationally this would have been better with a spirit ash to take some heat off of us against melania but i didn't really need it and wanted to see how it would feel to do a full all members run without it i'm actually working on a whole video for that next week so we'll talk about it then but short version here scripting fights is kind of boring to me and just as easy if not easier than getting a buddy with you i don't want to hit notes like i'm playing a rhythm game i want to build a fictional fantasy party and fight god like i said more on that next week to make sure you don't miss that subscribe we're finding new ways to play elden ring all the time follow us on twitch to watch these runs live august has been a little hectic but september will be on much more regularly and if you feel like it please join the patreon it's the best place to support us and we get to keep the most of the money there